the uh, letterpress print shop at the uh, Cumberland Heritage Village Museum. We do letterpress printing. Uh, letterpress printing was developed by uh, Johann Gutenberg back in 1450 and it really hasn't changed through till today. The big advantage of letterpress printing is the fact that it uses individual movable type. Each one of these drawers would be a different typeface, a different font. Each drawer is laid out exactly the same, so the T's, the H's, the E's will always be in the same place. When you set type, you take the letters one at a time. They go into a composing stick, so I set the width that I want, and then I put the letters in one at a time. They go in upside down, and you'll also notice that the letters are backwards. It's because this, is, this type actually will touch the paper, so it has to be a negative, and when it's inked and it touches the paper, it becomes a positive, so you're able to read it. I'll put spacing material between the words. When the line is full, I'll put a piece of leading between the uh, lines, and with a computer, they refer to spacing between lines as leading, and this is why, because it's a strip of lead. Once the stick is full, I put the material aside in a tray, then I go back and get more type, fill the stick, move it to the tray, back and forth, until it's ready to go. But when I'm finished printing, a lot of people forget this part, and it's the part that people don't like, is the type must go back into the drawers where we found it. And it takes almost as much time to put away as it does to uh, the type set. But once the form is ready to go, I've put a border around this. This is going to be a church notice. So it's got a bit of a headline on it, a bit of a border, and there's 10 point uh, text in there. And that's about two and a half hours worth of work to get it that far. But once I have this set, then I can put it onto the press and print as much as I, I need. This is a, a 1928 Chandler and Price Platin Press. It was built in uh, the United States. It's uh, over-engineered. As long as you put oil on it, it will run forever. It's a, it's a, it's a great, great machine. The, <clears throat> the form that we're going to print, it's going to be a postcard. And it's here, there's some graphic elements as well as text. It's locked into this frame so I can actually go anywhere from a small business card to an 11 by 17 inch page with this particular press. And I just fill the extra room with what we call furniture because it fills the room. These are mechanical wedges that basically hold all the type together. So I drop the form into the press, stand straight up and down. At the start of the day, I'll put ink onto the press. This is linseed oil and pigment. The pigment is char or carbon to create the black. And it's the consistency of tar so that it will stick to metal. That's the real secret that Gutenberg, when he developed the ink, is it must be able to stick to metal. Uh, it doesn't dry during it, the it, day? No, it will last six or eight hours. And I can put a, a rubber compound into it so that it will never dry. Okay. It can either dry by absorption or evaporation. I can set it to do one or the other. So I'll cover this disc with ink at the start of the day and I put on about that much ink at the start of the day and I can probably do a thousand to twelve hundred copies before I have to add any more wow. ink and it will just be a couple of dots just to make it more uh, more robust because I'm only printing a small small card. So what will happen, this flywheel will turn doing the work, it brings a set of rollers up to the disc Ink's being transferred from the disc onto the rollers. They have a bit of a shiny brown glass look. Then they roll down across the form. So now there's ink on the text that I showed you. I'll take a blank card, place it on the table. This is the platen. I've got three pins here so that I put the card exactly in the same place every time. And I've put the, uh, the, the, the pins to correspond with exactly where I've had the type in the, in the chase. So now I'll start the press. I'm just going to walk in front of you here. Going up and getting ink. Goes down across the form. I put a new card in there. It closes, makes the impression. You can walk around the side. 
I can print about 500 copies every hour with this press, which is actually faster than your home computer can print. It's, six, it's eight pages a minute is what I can print. As I say, it's faster than what uh, most people's home machines can print. Built in 1928, and it was used commercially until 1975. Uh, it has always uh, been electric. Yes, yes. Uh, electric motors have been around since the late 1800s. Uh, so uh, before that, they might have had a steam engine outside and a large shaft running through the middle of the shop, and the belt would be running off of that. Or with smaller machines, we have one in the back there, it might have a treadle like the old sewing machines mm -hmm. and you would use the treadle. Or it could be like this, this, hand, this tabletop model where it's the same thing, you just uh, print it by hand. It's a lot slower, but for some projects, it, it's a lot of work to set up the big machine for, yeah. for just a small, small wow. process. So it takes me about three minutes to do, to set a line of type by hand. But we wanted to come up with a better way of, of uh, setting type. So in 1880, we developed a personal computer. Well, it's not really a personal computer, but I like to refer to it as Is it the type machine? It's a, it's a hot type machine. And what it does is, I can sit down at this keyboard, and as I type, this uh, um, uh, magazine will open up gates and these brass molds will drop out. Each brass mold has a set of teeth in the back which identifies one letter from the next. And if you look closely, you might be able to see letters engraved into the end of the uh, brass molds. So what happens is, in three minutes, I would set type by hand, but in 30 seconds I could type the same amount of material on, on this machine. But it's not actually um, letters, it's, it's a mold. So what happens is I'll take the mold, slide it into this side of the machine, start typing the second line. While I'm typing the second line, this machine closes up and it puts hot lead across the mold, pushes a slug up against it. When it pulls away, we now have letters attached to the slug. So you're now creating a line of type instead of working with individual letters. Hmm. I haven't even finished typing the second line. This machine opens up, the slug drops out the bottom. This arm will come down, grab the mold, lifts them away. So when, it's, when I finish the second line, I can push that into the caster. But while I'm doing that, the, the molds previously are lifted up, put onto a conveyor. Each mold has got a set of teeth on the back. It'll feed along this conveyor. There's bars that get smaller and smaller and smaller as it goes along. At a certain point, the bars can't hold up the teeth anymore, and they'll drop back into their respective compartments. So I can be typing, casting, and distributing the molds all at the same time. This machine was developed in, 19, in 1880 and used until the 1970s. Ottawa Citizen and Montreal Gazette got rid of the last of the hot type machines in 1972. It revolutionized printing around the world. This is why we have libraries full of books and daily newspapers. It's machines like this. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, it would take tons of material. Each one of these drawers only contains about that much material, and then you've got to get another drawer. So we require tons of material in order to do large projects. And this machine, oh, one other thing about this machine, when I'm finished with handset type, I have to put it back in the drawers. When I'm finished printing with this, I just drop back in the pot and I melt it and make new type tomorrow. So it's always brand new type and I never have to put it away. And I say the machine also puts away the little molds wow. when I'm done. Thank you so much. Yeah, quite Thank welcome. you. What is your name? Steve. Steve, Steve. Yeah, thank you Steve. Quite thank welcome. you so much.